Hello fans, collectors, and investors, welcome back to Iconic Baseball. For those of you new to the channel, let me first say welcome. And let me introduce myself. Um, I am Iconic Al. I've been a 30-year collector, and it's been a journey for me. Um, ever since I was about 10 years old, this hobby has been a big part of my life. Uh, it has waxed and waned, but it's really always been there for me. And uh, I'm not one of these people that, you know, has come back into the hobby in 2020. I've always been there. And uh, if you're someone who has either recently taken up collecting again or has been a collector for a long time, as, as I have, and are interested in the best players, the greatest players, the most iconic players of all time, I highly recommend that you subscribe to the channel because uh, this channel is just getting started and I'm basically, this channel is a humble way for me to share my collection and also hopefully impart nuggets of knowledge on the collecting community and uh, I don't think I've ever been more excited in my collecting history than I am right now because we are T-minus five days away from the National Sports Collectors Convention in Atlantic City and I've never been in my 30 years in the hobby I've never been to a national so for me this is a uh, Kind of a bucket list thing uh, maybe it will lead to more and more nationals in the future but uh this will be my first national and i'm really excited to uh to get there for the first time and i'm uh i'm really happy that uh, my wife is humoring me and she'll be there with me and that's one of my big goals for this year's national it, if i don't pick up anything it'll still be a win because i'll get to meet people i'll get to network and hang out with other content creators that that have inspired me and uh if you see me at the national i'll be dressed like this i'm six foot five and i'm pretty hard to miss so don't hesitate to come up to me introduce yourself if you're a collector if you're a creator content creator uh if you're somebody in the industry somebody in the hobby i'd love to meet you and um i'll be giving out these custom iconic Isle baseball cards this is my rookie card in the hobby and uh it's modeled after the 52 tops design and um they are signed and numbered out of 500 copies so i'm going to be uh making it rain with these cards at the show so uh i'd love to trade cards with you if you have a card of yourself or you just want one of mine i'm happy to give it out so uh come find me at the national uh another topic i wanted to go over was what am i looking for what am i targeting at the show and um, i've kind of formulated in my head a little bit of a list of the things that i'm targeting obviously we all have want lists wish lists uh and so there's no way I'll be able to acquire all the things on this list at the National because that would cost way more money than I currently own. So I'll, I'll take you through my top few things that I'm looking for at the show. And um, my mentality is just going to be to be open minded and opportunistic because uh, there are some declining prices. There, there are um, macroeconomic concerns. And I think a lot of dealers will be very motivated to sell. And that could create some great opportunities um, with iconic baseball cards, autographs, memorabilia. I think there's going to be a lot of um, a lot of opportunities for those of us that are willing and able to buy. So uh, let me go through these items with you when we come back. Take me out to the ball game. Take me out with the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and cracker jack. I don't care if I never get back. Let me root, root, root for the home team. If they don't win, it's a shame. For it's one, two, three strikes, you're out at the old ball game. All right, we're back. In front of me, I have a list of about 10 items that I will be actively targeting at the show in Atlantic City here. And as I read through the list, I'll try to display a picture of each item as I read through it so that you can have some visual on what I'm talking about. So let's start at the top here. This is a big one. Number one is the 1948 Bowman Stan Musial rookie card. And uh, that, that's a big card. So I'll be looking for a PSA 2 or 3, something that presents well, something that has decent centering, um, good eye appeal, good image resolution, maybe a light crease that you can't see too well but uh, a well presenting two or three on that card would be phenomenal and uh, you know one of those grail cards for me I, I think Stan Musial is still extremely underrated um, 
based on the metrics, what he did as a hitter. I think he's a top 10 hitter. And uh, to have his rookie card, the 48 Bowman also is just this great portrait shot of Stan Musial. I get how the 48 Leaf is a more colorful card, but something about the 48 Bowman really appeals to me. Uh, I generally prefer portrait cards um, where you see a young portrait of a player like Stan Musial. For me, that's uh, very iconic to see that black and white portrait image of Stan Musial. So that's one I'll be targeting um, if the right deal, if the right example arises. Okay, number two is the 1959 Tops Bob Gibson rookie or the Pepto-Bismol pink <laughs> Bob Gibson rookie. Another iconic card, another expensive card. Um, like I said, uh, there's no way I'll be able to add all these cards on the list, but if I can pick off one, two, or three of these at the National this year, I'll be ecstatic. Um, for the Bob Gibson rookie, I'll be targeting probably a PSA 3 or a 4. Depends on the eye appeal, the price point, um, so forth. But Bob Gibson is another one where, you know, one of the greatest pitchers we've ever, ever seen in the game, uh, one of the more dominant pitchers in the game. And to have his rookie card would just be an amazing thing. And I just like the eye appeal. It's an iconic card. All the rest. So that's what I'll be looking out for. And I'm sure I'll see many examples of it at the show. It's just a matter of finding my example at the right price uh, that I can afford. Okay, number three is the 2000 Topps Chrome Traded Miguel Cabrera rookie card. And this is a, on the more modern end of the spectrum. But... Um, I don't have a Miguel Cabrera rookie card, and that's one that I would like to add. I have some other Miguel items, but uh, I would love to add a PSA 9 of that 2000 Topps Chrome Miguel Cabrera rookie card, or a BGS 9. I'd be okay with that too, um, but that's number three. Uh, number four is the 19, 1940 Playball Shoeless Joe Jackson, which, again, a grail card. One that, if I buy that card, it'll probably be the only thing that I buy <laughs> at the show. Uh, which gives you an, an idea of my budget here. Um, I'll be looking at a PSA 2 on that card, most likely, or a 1.5, something like that, or an SGC 2. But again, a well-presenting example with good centering, maybe a little crease or a couple creases that are kind of hard to see, don't detract from the eye appeal. But that 1940 play ball, Shoeless Joe, one of his few cards in, in existence, and one of the few that is still attainable, for me, uh, the other the cards that came out during his playing days are, for me, unattainable. I mean, I, I can't afford Shoeless Joe cards from his playing days. Uh, they're sort of out of my realm at this point. So to own a 1940 card, um, which is, you know, not too far removed from his active playing days, that'll do the trick, uh, especially if I can find a good, well-presenting example. Okay, number five is the 1953 Tops Eddie Matthews. And it's not an Eddie Matthews rookie card, but it's a very early Eddie Matthews card. And the 53 Tops is just a beautiful image. I mean, just striking image of in color of a smiling Eddie Matthews. I mean, just just a beautiful card. And if you look at what the 52 Tops goes for, I mean, that for me is unattainable. That that is a very expensive card, and for the money, for me, just not worth it. The 53 Tops offers an amazing value because I think it's actually the more attractive card. And it's one year later, it's still a very early Eddie Matthews card. And with Eddie Matthews, we're talking about a, a top five third baseman of all time and a 500 home run hitter and uh, someone who's clearly in the top 100 ball players of all time. And uh, in the PSA five or six range, still very affordable. Uh, so I'll be targeting like maybe a PSA five or a six of that 53 tops Eddie Matthews. Okay, uh, number seven, I will be looking, um, number, number six, I will be looking to add any card or autograph of Kid Nichols. Now, Kid Nichols is not a name that most fans know, and most lay baseball fans have never heard of Kid Nichols, but he is uh, known in uh, pre-war circles as being one of the premier, if not the premier pitcher in the 1800s. Uh, it's basically him or Cy Young. And uh, you could make an argument that Kid Nichols was the greatest pitcher of the 1800s, and so there are autographs to be had for Kid Nichols. They just aren't cheap. And there are cards of, in the 1800s of Kid Nichols. They just aren't cheap. So it's one of those things. If, if I find that you know white whale and it's sitting there at a dealer table and there is a price on it that I can afford with the money that I brought, that's sort of like, okay, well, the clouds parted and the heavens sm smiled down on me and I'm walking out of that show with a Kid Nichols autograph slabbed by PSA. 
I mean, it could happen. I've never been to a national, but you know, be looking out for a Kid Nichols item because I ha I really own nothing um, authentic of Kid Nichols. I just have a couple reprints of cards from the 1800s that I have been unable to afford to this point. So that's number seven. Uh, number eight is um, any slabbed autograph of Walter Johnson, the greatest pitcher of all time. Um, I own a Walter Johnson card from his playing days, but I an autograph of Walter Johnson still eludes me. And if I could pick up a, a nice example, slabbed, uh, three by five or a postcard signed by Walter Johnson, you better believe I'd be interested. Uh, so I'll be looking for something slabbed by PSA. Number eight would be a slabbed autograph of Jackie Robinson. Again, these are all high, high end items for me. These are, these are high top of the budget items for me. So if I go home with a Jackie Robinson autograph, that will be likely the only thing that I go home with, but I will be looking for one. Um, we're talking about like a slab three by five card or a postcard, something with a nice signature of Jackie Robinson. I can't overstate how important he is to the hobby, how important he is to humanity, how important he is to our country and civil rights. I could talk for hours on Jackie Robinson, but I'll be looking for something signed by Jackie Robinson for the show. Um, and then finally, I'm going to kind of lump these two together. I'm looking for um, Maguire and Sosa rookie cards signed by Maguire and Sosa. So slabbed. Uh, 1985 tops, Mark McGuire, um, with like a nice clean signature of Mark McGuire on it. Um, I'm looking. I don't need a PSA 10 or anything like that. But um, same thing with the 90 Leaf Sosa, the one of him bunting, which I think is kind of funny. Sammy Sosa bunting. Uh, but there's nostalgia around those cards for me. I don't really own a McGuire or a Sosa card that I'm proud of. <laughs> that kind of encapsulates. You know, an iconic item for them. I, I've had the opportunity to get the uh, the autographs of McGuire and Sosa, which I have a previous episode about. But to have a a slab rookie card signed would be fun, and uh, they wouldn't be extremely highly priced. So that's another thing that's uh, sort of intriguing to me. If I can scoop up a good deal on a autographed '90 Leaf Sosa, yeah, why not? Same thing with the '85 uh, Tops McGuire. So that's it. Um, that's ten items, I believe. And then in the modern realm, now, this player does not fall on my top 100 list because he's too young. He has not amassed the numbers or the resume needed to be a top 100 player yet. But I would be looking to add a numbered rookie card of Juan Soto. Uh, I'll be looking at modern dealers and scanning to see if there's anything low number, anything scarce, rare, you know, a, re a refractor. Um, I particularly like the Bowman's Best refractors from 2018 because uh, the, say the purple refractor is the blue refractor um, if there's any deals there anything discounted cheap then I could you know potentially make a play for a, uh, a purple refractor of Juan Soto one of those numbered out of 250 something like that that has some inherent scarcity to it because I really do think that if you don't act on Juan Soto soon it might be too late you know <laughs> you might get to a point like we are with Trout where uh you know, it's pretty hard to find a PSA 10 Trout rookie for anything in the realm of affordability. So uh, we're probably heading there with Soto at some point. Um, so at this point, if I can find a really good deal on a on a nice numbered uh, Soto rookie card, I could pull the trigger this year if I see the right one. All right, so those that's kind of gives you an idea, which it kind of encapsulates my collecting style. I'm looking for guys from the 1800s clear through to a current day 23 year old play so uh in my mind I, I make no distinction between the greatest of 1887 versus the greatest of 2022 uh, if it's one of the top players of all time i'm in <laughs> and i want to own something of all the most significant players and that's kind of the way i view collecting it's a diversified yet weighted portfolio of items that hopefully re represents on a weighted basis how great they were and uh, I want that to be how my collection is you know uh, if I'm gonna spend a lot of money <laughs> it better be on Jackie Robinson you know it better be Walter Johnson someone like that that will always matter and will appreciate over time and really I highly respect you know what they did in the game so that's just my two cents again um, thank you again for, for tuning into this channel more videos to come I'm really just getting started. Uh, the channel really hasn't even started rolling yet. So 
as uh, as I get some of my cards back from PSA, hopefully soon. I have an order there that's been there for about 15 months now, and that's kind of held up my videos lately. So I'd love to get going. I'm counting up from 100 to 1 of the top most iconic ball players of all time. I think I'm stuck on number 87 right now, so I'm hoping to get rolling back up and we'll get to number one eventually. It might take me another year, but we'll get there. Again, thank you for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any. And um, I hope to see you at the National. Until then, keep collecting and stay iconic.